In this video, we're going to show you how to create a custom shape in BioRender. Um, there are many reasons why you might want to make a custom shape. Perhaps, you know, something to highlight anatomy or a blob. Perhaps it's a tumor or a cancer outline. Or you want to highlight a region of a protein, perhaps. Um, you can come up here to the uh, Insert Shapes menu. And if you roll down to Custom, that's where you'll find um, a variety of options here to create a very customized shape in BioRender. So these uh, first row are sort of uh, the bean or blob shape. The second row are kind of a multi-point object you can create, uh, perhaps a callout or a zoom in. I'll show you how to use that as well. Um, as well as using this pencil tool. If you've got a steadier hand, you can certainly use this pencil tool to outline and create um, a full circle around something. So let me start with this uh, sort of bean or blob shape tool up here. I'm going to click down on any one of these. They're really all the same object. They're just pre-shaped in different ways. So I'll click the first one and just drag over any object that you'd like to highlight. Let me move in here a little bit. Um, and the nice thing about the blob shape is that you can kind of mold it kind of like uh, Play-Doh or clay. You can shape it to the shape that you like. Now I can't really see what I'm tracing over, so what I might want to do is decrease the opacity a little bit and then maybe use a brighter color. Um, if I'm highlighting maybe um, a region in the brain like so, I might want to use a red color and of course sliding the opacity slider will give that illusion that it's sort of a highlighted area of the brain. So you're kind of using these nodes again to fine-tune and highlight areas that you'd like to to have highlighted. Uh, the blue nodes will obviously move the object in and out. The little white nodes will actually create a bend in the shape and you can kind of um, mold it to your liking. Okay, and I'm going to zoom out here. So say that's the region that you wanted to highlight. There you go, you got uh, a nice highlighted region. And that can continue uh, as many times around the uh, brain as you like. Um, another way to do it again is using the pencil tool. So coming back up here and using the, uh, well, it's actually both in the insert line section as well as the custom shape menu here. Now you need a little bit of a steadier hand. So I'm clicking down and perhaps tracing this nuclei of the brain. And I have to make sure that it does match up exactly to where I started to kind of close that loop and zooming in a little bit more. It was a bit messy with my line here, but I can tuck it back in and clean it up after I've illustrated it. And then same thing that I did with this, I can actually color it to, you know, whatever color I like. Maybe I'll remove that stroke and then I'll decrease the opacity. So again, really nice way to highlight areas of anatomy, perhaps a protein or any object. There we go. Now another reason why you might want to use custom shapes is to create maybe an uneven and bumpy surface. Um, in this example, perhaps you'd want to create um, kind of a wavy mucosal layer on top of this row of enterocytes. Um, and I'd probably use actually the pencil tool in this case. So I'm just going to come up here and create kind of a wavy pattern. Um, and then it really doesn't matter what happens outside the edges of this canvas because everything outside of this white border or canvas does not uh, export. So really you can um, keep it pretty messy on the edges and it won't matter. Um, let's see, I'm going to remove that border and fill it with sort of a greenish color, maybe a greenish yellowish color like that. Uh, maybe I'll go a little bit darker here. Great, and of course I can come in here and sort of delete a couple of nodes if it's too bumpy. It kind of smooths it out a little bit. Uh, let's see here. Okay, and then I'm gonna wanna send this to a, a, a further layer behind the row of cells. So I'm going to right click and send to back. There we go. Okay, looking pretty good. I'm gonna zoom in here a little bit. And of course, again, you can clean this up as much as you like. Um, you know, change the shape of it 
depending on you know whether you want to fill this area with some bacteria and you don't have enough room you can always adjust as you see fit. Now you can also use um, our custom pointed blob shape which is the second row here and this is pretty handy for using for making call outs so for example if I wanted to create uh, some sort of zoom in of a particular area of a diagram I can make maybe a smaller one here like this so I'm gonna sort of make a, a zoom out call out for this area of the mucosal layer I'm just gonna make this a little bit bigger and I'm gonna make both of these have a uh, a green fill so I'm going to just color pick like so and I'm gonna want some sort of connector to show that these are actually associated with each other so I'm gonna come back up here to the custom pointed blob shape um, really doesn't really matter whichever one you use I'll, I'll just grab the first one here now it's gonna look a little bit silly for a minute but basically what you want to do is line up some of these edges actually I'm gonna um, remove the transparency or the fill color for now just so you can see it um, and it doesn't have to be perfect because I'm actually going to send this to be behind the squares so you're really not going to see the details of the lines like so that looks pretty good and it can be approximate um, in this case I'm actually going to remove the borders and make it sort of a gray fill like that um, and I'm going to move this box in front give that illusion and to take it a step further I might even add a bit of a gradient so if I move this over just so you can see here um, I'm in the fill and gradient option and for one of these endpoints I'm going to reduce the opacity to make it look like it's kind of flying out from that smaller square now you can toggle as well does it look better this way or this way I think this side looks a bit more natural so I'll keep it to that um, and you can also kind of darken one side or the other like so great and then of course you know you can throw in um, whatever you need to fill in in the middle maybe it's bacteria whatever you are zooming into that object for Oops. there we go you can get pretty fancy with the type of uh, blob shapes you create. For example, for this uh, brain outline, this has several little nodes. But just to know that it is possible to get pretty creative with the, um, the shapes that you uh, outline. And then it can be relatively simple, but you can combine different blob shapes to, uh, to make some organic shapes like this uh, cluster of proteins here around the DNA. These are all customizable objects and the nice thing about using our custom shapes is that you take advantage of the infinite number of colors you can pick from um, as opposed to using an icon that does have slightly more limited color palettes our custom blobs and shapes um, behave like our squares and circles where you can actually color it to whatever color you like under the rainbow great and that's how I would use custom objects in BioRender